Hey gang, it's Mike from Power BI Tips. I'm going to give you a new tip or trick around maximizing and minimizing a visual. I was working on a project recently where it made sense to have a visual larger, but not to obliterate the context of the page. And what I mean by that is, take for example this bubble chart up here in the right hand corner. If I, and I'm in the desktop, so I'm holding control. So if I control click my icon here to expand this visual, the visual expands to the full size of the page. The axis, the X axis uncompresses, and you can see all the dates clearly across the X axis, as well as the legend of the custom legend that was built for this one as well. If I want to shrink this visual back down to its normal size, I can again click on the minimize icon and then I can minimize the chart, and so it shrinks back down to its normal size. Now, this is a little bit different behavior than what you get from the normal focus mode on other visuals. So if I go to another visual, this icon up here is the same icon, but it's actually for the focus mode. So if I focus mode this visual, what it does, it brings the entire visual to the context of just the visual. I can click on things I want here in the visual, but I don't have any context relative to the rest of the page. So if I go back to the report, again, I'll expand this one visual. So expand this visual to the full size of the page. Now I have the ability to keep my slicers on the page and still adjust my data based on what I'm interested in seeing for other slicers or other context on the page. I can even leave up my buttons on the right hand side, or if I had any other additional filter context or elements on the page, I can still use them as well. I think this is a great alternative to um, having to use the focus mode button. Okay, let's show you how to build this and we'll do it on a new page. Moving over here to this page, here's my page. And so a couple things you'll need to turn on so we can see everything here. We'll go to the view ribbon and we'll make sure that we turn on the bookmarks and the selection windows. I have these over here on the right hand side. And so these are the elements that are on the page. The selection window shows me the items we're looking at. I have a bubble chart up here and this is already a group and you can see that I've renamed it bubble chart from the typical grouping name. And in here I have a, a legend and I actually have the chart itself. The other two charts we're interested in is the chart, the bar chart, and then the matrix um, view down below. So first thing we wanna do to make this possible is we wanna take all of the original charts and we're gonna to wanna to group them into a group. So holding shift, clicking all three items, and then right clicking on any one of them. And then we can then group all three of those items together. Now by default, it makes a group and it pushes the group to the top. So let's just call this standard view. So this is gonna be our standard view of all the visuals and I can just drag it here to the bottom so it shows up. Now, interesting here is now that we have a group and this is one of the things I really like about groups right now is the icon or hiding and showing a group, everything is bound together. So if I click this one item, all of the visuals are hidden. If I bring it back, all the visuals are here. So this is really made a lot easier with groups. Now I'm gonna grab my bubble chart because this is the one item that I want. I'm gonna select it here inside the selection window, control C, and then out here I will can control V, paste it back out here. So now I have a bubble chart that is independent of everything else. Let's drag it down here a bit lower. And now it's behind everything else. Let's turn off every all the other visuals. And we can see here, there's my visual. So now I can resize this visual so that it's nice and large. And you'll notice here my, my scale here for the, uh, the legend is now kind of in the wrong place. So we can also adjust this now. So here we can take this scale and we can adjust this um, item. And I'm gonna move it just a bit below the regular part of the chart. So I'm gonna adjust the chart so it's wider up here. And then I will put the legend down below. And let's try to center it as the best we can like this. Now here you'll notice that the, the white of the chart doesn't extend all the way to the bottom of this grouping. But if I click on the group, you see the white, the, the group actually extends all the way to the bottom of the legend here. So what I wanna do is I wanna adjust uh, how I'm showing the white background for all of these elements. So let me adjust this legend a little bit more so it doesn't have a scrolling bar. And then I'll click in the group. So the group has a property. So clicking on this bubble chart property, I can then go over to the visualizations window, click on the settings button, and we'll turn on a background. And our background will be full white, 100%. So now everything looks like a solid visual. Even though there's multiple elements here, it's the same thing. 
Now, another trick I like to use here is I want them to be exactly the same size as the previous standard view. So there's no um, misalignment between the objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the bubble chart above the standard view, and then I'm going to turn on the standard view. And we'll notice right away that we weren't quite 100% aligned on each of the elements. So I'm going to stretch this visual. And if I stretch the entire group, it will stretch everything at the same time. So there we go. Now it looks like it's exactly the same size. So if I turn off the bubble chart now, it looks like it's the exact same uh, dimensions as whatever is below it for the other visuals. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the bubble chart below the standard view. We can turn that off. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna be able to add some bookmarks to show and hide the two different elements. So leaving standard view on and the bubble view off, I will select those by holding shift and selecting the two views snap a bookmark so click the add button we'll rename this this is page one or page one b and then i'm going to add a note here this will be standard view on now i think it's really critical that you name your bookmarks appropriately um, because you can get a lot of them and in this one i had a lot of bookmarks previously it just makes it really clear uh, how you name them my typical naming schema is the page name, uh, a dash, and then some sort of descriptor about what's action is happening. All right, so let's switch these. So let's turn the first one off and the, the second one on. So now we have our enlarged bubble chart. Again, we're gonna select both elements, holding shift for both of them, and hit add for another bookmark. And this is page 1B, and this is gonna be large bubble. Okay, now we don't want any of the data elements to change here. So we actually have different properties here. So for both of these bookmarks, we're gonna modify the properties here. We don't want the data to change when we select them. So we'll turn that off. We don't want it to navigate to the current page. It's not needed in this case. So I'll turn that off. And then we don't want all visuals being interacted with. It's only the ones that we selected. So remember previously we selected those two groups, which means we're only gonna control those two groups. So we'll turn selected visuals on. So we should only have just display mode, so hide or show, and then only hide or show the visuals that we selected. Same thing goes for the large bubble. Turn off the data, turn off the current page, and then switch it from all visuals to the selected visuals. So let's test it. We can click both of our bookmarks and make sure that it is swapping between the two views. Yes, it looks right. So the final step here is add some buttons so that we can actually control these. So we'll go here to the home ribbon, Actually, just kidding. We'll go to the insert ribbon, grab an image, and here on my desktop, I have an expand icon and a shrink icon. So I'll use the expand icon, and then here's my icon. So let's just make this smaller so it doesn't take up so much space. And then I'll just sneak it over here in the corner of my visual. Okay, that looks good. Then what we can do is we can then add an action to this button. Um, you'll notice here that the image is not in this group. So one of the things that we're gonna wanna do here as well, as well as add the action, is we're gonna wanna add the image into the standard view. So I'm gonna grab the image, I'm gonna drag it down here into the standard view. And then I'll probably rename it just so it's clear. So this will be expand. And then we will add an action to this. So selecting the item, turn on an action, and then the action will be trigger a bookmark the bookmark will be our new one, page uh, bubble, large bubble on. So clicking that should invoke that action. We need to also grab the other action. So let's double check that this action is working, holding control and clicking on the button. And in fact does trigger the, uh, the bookmark. So now we need to add our second icon to shrink this back to normal size. Add another image. This time we'll use the shrink icon. We'll resize this. And we'll move that over here to the right hand side of the page. And then now this will be our shrinking icon to make it smaller again. So for this one, again, we're going to add the image to the bubble chart group. Now it's there. And you can see that it's there when I minimize the window. And now we want to add uh, to this action as well. And we're going to make it another bookmark. And the bookmark will now be go back to the standard view. Okay, so let's double check that that action is working. 
holding control, clicking the icon, and there we go. So now we have the icon that makes it bigger and the icon that makes it smaller. This could be used for any uh, number of visuals. The only thing you would need to do here is add a new group for each of the visuals that you would want to expand into the larger image. Okay. Uh, the only other thing we want to add here is there is um, the expand icon or the uh, focus mode on the original visuals. So in desktop, you won't be able to turn it off. Uh, however, when you're in the service, you can actually turn off that this icon here, which is focus mode, directly on the visual. So we're going to turn those off for these two visuals because in reality, we don't want you to use focus mode. We actually prefer that you use the expand and shrink buttons to interact with this visual instead. We just want to remove user confusion. So we'll go here to the standard view, we'll expand the bubble chart, we'll select the bubble chart, and then we'll go over here to the visual headers, and then we'll go down here to where it says focus mode icon, and we'll turn that off. Now, again, it won't show on the original, it won't, it'll still show it in the desktop because we're in designer mode, so everything will be shown here. However, when we turn that off, focus mode, in fact, will disappear. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other one, so I'm gonna hold control, click, go to the other visual, there's my bubble chart, and then we wanna grab the bubble chart itself, and then go back down to visual tips again, the visual headers, scroll all the way down until we see focus mode, focus mode off, and there we go. So with that, we have adjusted all the visuals, it will now expand and shrink, and we will actually hide the old focus mode icon that we don't wanna use anymore. So that one will no longer be there, and we'll only use our expand and shrink icons. Well, thanks for watching. Appreciate your time. Have a great day and please like and subscribe for more great information and tips and tricks from powerbi.tips.